Hello and welcome to another video lecture at MrWatkins.com. I'm Mr. Watkins. This will be on the light dependent reaction and this one is specifically geared towards um, IB biology students. So I'm going to start up here in the corner with um, light or sunlight. So I'm going to draw a little sun here. Sunlight has different levels of energy, different wavelengths of light that are produced. And that light um, comes and strikes in a chloroplast special proteins in the thylakoid membrane. So I'm going to draw an example, and this will come out of the book that we're using in IB currently. Uh, we're going to draw this particular molecule. Now these little dots that I'm drawing in here, these are going to be all the photosynthetic pigments. You have chlorophyll A, and then off of chlorophyll, or also in addition to chlorophyll A, you have carotenoids like beta carotene, you have xanthophyll, phycoblins, um, you have chlorophyll B. These other pigment molecules specifically pick up energy and convert that, or light energy, and convert that into chemical energy. Different wavelengths of light had different energy. Different pigment molecules absorb those different pieces of energy. It's called P680, this whole complex, or photosystem 2, because the average wavelength of light all these molecules absorb is roughly 680 nanometers. So when light hits one of these molecules, it actually, that absorbs that energy, it will actually cause an electron to become excited to a point where it will jump a level, go up to a higher level of energy, and therefore also jump on a level in uh, the electron cloud. And when that happens, other molecules pick that up to where eventually that electron ends up up here in the primary electron acceptor. And this primary electron acceptor then will pass this molecule on to a special protein, a special molecule called plastoquinin or PQ. Now, we're going to come back to this in a minute, but just remember this electron came off of one of these pigment proteins, one of these things like chlorophyll A, which is the primary uh, source. And that electron is going to need to be, it will need to be replaced um, so that that molecule can continue to absorb light energy. When it gave up its electron, it has been oxidized. And when plastoquinin picked up the electron, that plastoquinin was reduced. When the plastoquinin picks up the electron, it becomes, it, it gets more energy, and it will physically change the shape of that plastoquinin so that it moves down within the membrane. I'm going to draw the membrane here in just a minute. Until it runs into another molecule, or actually a group of molecules called cytochrome. Uh, the group is called the cytochrome complex. I'm just going to label that as cytoc. Now what ends up happening as it goes through this process, when it gets to cyt cytochrome C, it will give up its electron to this complex. In the process of doing that, hydrogen ions found outside the stroma will then be pulled or pumped to the inside the thylakoid. So let's go ahead and draw our membrane here, and I'm going to do that in uh, red here, and I'm just going to draw one or two phospholipids here just so you get the idea that these things are embedded in a membrane and within this membrane is where this thylakoid membrane is where this light dependent reaction occurs because what it's going to be doing is converting that light energy and it's dependent upon light to do that. So as we go through this process here just remember that it's found inside a membrane. Now this plastoquinin has dropped off its electron to cytochrome C. In that process again a hydrogen ion, a proton, is then pumped inside uh, this thylakoid membrane. Cytochrome C on this other end here has a product or a molecule called plastocyanin. Plastocyanin then will pick up this electron. Cytochrome C becomes oxidized. Plastoquinin becomes reduced. And the plastoquinin will then take this electron. It'll move through the membrane to another photosystem, photosystem 1, called P700. P700 then will pick up that electron and it will send that electron to the primary electron acceptor for that particular photosystem. And then at that acceptor where that electron goes or comes into, it will send the molecule to or send the electron to a molecule called FD. 
FD is another electron carrier. And what FD will end up doing is carrying that electron over to either, well, it'll carry it to um, the, a new molecule, a new enzyme that will store that energy, store that energy that was once picked up way over here into NADPH2. So FD will carry it over, carry it over to this other protein called NADP reductase. This NAD reductase, just as I just told you, um, takes that NADP plus some hydrogen ions and stores that energy, that energy in that electron, that energy that came from way back over here, into NADPH2. This molecule, similar to ATP in the fact that it has the function of storing that electron, storing energy, is then used in the light independent reaction, specifically the Calvin cycle of the light independent reaction, um, to drive that for the fixation of carbon. I'm going to go ahead and draw in the rest of these membrane uh, molecules here so that you have an idea of what's going on and you get, a, you get a real feel for where this is. And again, remember, this membrane is the thylakoid membrane that is found inside the chloroplast. And this membrane will continue on around, and I'm going to go ahead and just draw it going down because we have another molecule here that we're going to end up being placing inside that's also found inside the mitochondria. All right, now FD does not have to carry this molecule over to NADP reductase. NADP reductase, ASE, that enzyme that catalyzes this reaction. It can also then carry this molecule, and I'm going to draw it going around over the top, but it actually can carry this molecule around to the other side and bring it right back into cytochrome C. And when it does, it sends it through, it sends that electron through, we get another hydrogen coming in, and so now we're building up these hydrogens inside this thylakoid. Outside the thylakoid here, this area is called the stroma. And inside is called the thylakoid, or the inner thylakoid space. Now, on the other end down here, we have a very special molecule called ATP synthase. And I'm not going to draw the rest of the membrane coming around, but just note that it does. It's got this very characteristic uh, shape on the end of it down here. Hydrogen ions build up on the inside of the thylakoid membrane. And this buildup has to be relieved or needs to be relieved. And the cell is actually quite um, good and quite, uh, um, quite efficient about pulling up this piece of extra energy. Because as we increase the amount of hydrogen ions in here. Diffusion says things were going to go, particles are going to go from a high concentration to a low concentration. This ATP synthase acts very similar to a channel protein and so that the hydrogen goes through. This movement, because of diffusion, causes ATP synthase to spin, to physically turn, and we then the cell uses that to convert ADP plus inorganic phosphate into ATP, and again, storing energy. This ATP, this NADPH2, are both going to be used in the light independent reaction of the Calvin cycle. Now let's go back over here. Remember the fact that light struck this particular complex of pigments, knocked off an electron. That electron has to be replaced, and that process is called photolysis. Now, photolysis is the splitting of water by light. So here we've got our water, and it's going to split it and knock it into three different pieces. One of these pieces is going to be an electron or electrons. And this is what's used to replace the electrons that were lost up here in P680. It also is going to create a hydrogen ion, or it's also called a proton. And this hydrogen ion will join the rest of the hydrogen ions that have been pumped across, and then that buildup again will send it right through ATP synthase. ATP will be formed. And then the last thing is oxygen. Oxygen is going to be given off, and this oxygen is what's released. It's one of the things that we breathe in, what we need to survive, and the plant is actually using it as a waste product. Now this hydrogen ion that's over here, this hydrogen ion, because it's now out in the stroma, can come right back around through and we get this whole cyclic piece. There is a couple of more things that you as an IB student need to be aware of. 
This process here is this electron transport system or electron transport train. As this electron transport chain is used and it goes this direction, where NADPH is made on the end, hydrogen ion comes through. This is called non-cyclic photo, because of the light, phosphorylation, the addition of the phosphate here by ATP synthase. If this process goes through and FD brings this electron back through this cytochrome complex and hydrogen ions are brought in and we go through this process, then this is called cyclic photophosphorylation because we have this little cycle that goes around. ATP synthase is that channel protein that does the phosphorylation. Now the buildup of hydrogen ions on the inside of the thylakoid membrane, that sets up this diffusion, this process by which we have a high hydrogen ion concentration and we need to reduce that. So there's a special name for ATP synthase basically funneling off or reducing that pressure allowing for this hydrogen ion to go through and that's called chemiosmosis. And chemiosmosis is basically the chemical version of osmosis you know with water except we're going to be talking about hydrogen ions. Specifically pumping hydrogen ions to the inside here setting up this concentration gradient so that ATP can be formed by the process of ATP synthase. This is an overview, pretty detailed overview of what you need to know as an IB student for the light dependent reaction. Thank you.